Today, I want to talk to you about how to use the color page in a little more depth than I have in some of the previous videos I've made. I want to talk about how you can do things like take the color of something in your footage and change an individual item like the color of someone's shirt or something else that might be in there that's one color that you want to change to another. So let's not waste any time and let's dive right into this. If you have a piece of footage in your timeline in the edit page, here I've got a piece of footage I've gotten from Storyblocks of a gentleman with a pink shirt on or a reddish shirt on waving and he's got a blue background. Now let's say for this piece of footage that what I wanted to do was to change the color of his shirt. The first thing I would do is select that footage in my timeline and I would go over to the color page. Now we're gonna be using a few different tools here that we haven't used before in this middle section. We've talked about the scopes over on the right and we've talked about some of the primary wheels and how to change colors on the left. But this middle section we haven't talked a lot about yet and I wanna show you some of the features. Now, just so you know, I am using the latest beta version of DaVinci Resolve Studio 19. So just be aware if there's something that you don't see and you're in the free version, it might be a studio only feature. But most of the stuff that I'll be using, you can actually do in the free version. The first thing I want to do is try to isolate his shirt and see if I can change the color of it. So what we want to do is come over to this tool, this little eyedropper tool right here that's called the qualifier. Again, another silly name from Resolve. They couldn't just call it the eyedropper or the color picker. It's the qualifier. So that's the word that we're gonna to use today, the qualifier. If you click on that, you'll notice that it defaults to this color picker here. I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna bring that eyedropper, which is now my cursor turned into an eyedropper, place it over his shirt, and I'm gonna click somewhere in the middle where the main color is. Now, if you notice, nothing seems to have happened right here. But if you look up at the node in the upper right, it's gone from looking at the entire image of that video clip and it's just isolated the shirt. Now, if we want to see just the shirt in our preview window, what we need to do is to go up above it here on the left and click on the highlight tab. That'll change so that we only see his shirt, exactly what we've selected, that one color. And as you can see, it hasn't selected every bit of his shirt. It's just selected the majority of it. And if we're going to change the color of the whole shirt, then we want to make sure that all of the shirt area is actually selected so we can make that change. So go back down under that qualifier tool, that eyedropper tool, and let's switch over to where it has the qualifier plus that's called the picker add. And what that's going to do is allow us to add more areas for our selection. And if I go back up to my footage and start clicking inside of it, areas where the shirt doesn't seem to be selected, you'll see more of that shirt becomes visible. And if you move this playhead marker around, you could actually start spotting areas where maybe the shirt isn't selected in all the areas we'd like it to be. And you can click in those different areas to get more of it to show up. Now here's something that's problematic. As we start clicking more areas, can you see that there's other areas up in the preview window that are beginning to get selected that aren't his shirt? You can see sort of his eyes, his hairline, some of his lips. Down in the lower left here, it's starting to select part of his arm where the red is reflecting into that arm. And we only want the shirt. So now that we've done a pretty good job of selecting the shirt so far, we need to take another step here to just isolate the shirt only. But let me take a second to thank our sponsor who actually provided us with today's video clip, Storyblocks. Storyblocks is an affordable asset house where you can get things like B-roll, music, sound effects, and images that you can use royalty free in your next YouTube video. And Storyblocks just added an entire section of templates specifically for DaVinci Resolve that include animated titles, transition, motion graphics, and more. Now I've been using Storyblocks for years before they ever became a sponsor because I actually really like the quality of the product they offer. I also like the fact that for one affordable price, you can get access to as many assets as you need. There are no download limits about how many videos that you can use at any given time period, how many images you can use, or how many pieces of music or sound effects that you can get from Storyblocks. I'll leave a link down below if you wanna go check out Storyblocks for yourself today. So now that we've done a pretty good job of selecting the shirt so far, we need to take another step here to just isolate the shirt only. Now, the way I would do that is I would take that playhead and put it all the way back at the beginning of our footage. And we're going to switch tools here and we're going to go over to the window tool, which is really just like a masking tool and it has different shapes that you can choose. Now, if we don't have a very specific shape like a square or a circle that would make sense for what we're trying to mask, 
you can go down to this pen tool and that will allow you to one by one draw around dots to outline the area that you want to select. So let's select that pen tool and let's slowly start drawing around this image as close as we can without going inside of the image so that we have lots of areas to control a mask. Now, I know when it comes to drawing masks, sometimes it gets really confusing because it can feel painstaking because you're drawing all these little outlines around things. And sometimes when you're video editing, you want to feel like you could just click a button and have things happen. But you'll notice when you start doing more advanced video edits, learning things like how to properly mask can make the difference between an effect that looks really good and one that looks just kind of okay. So I wanna give plenty of dots around this. I wanna give myself plenty of areas to adjust later on as we move through this footage. So I'm just gonna sit there and click around the outside edge. I'm just left clicking with this tool all around the outside edge of the shirt that I want to mask. And I'm even gonna go a little bit below here and I'm gonna drop below the frame. And as you can see, the minute I finished that mask, the stuff that was outside of the mask disappeared. You can no longer see the shadow of his arm you can no longer see the lips up above and the eye line that was getting a little bit of that red in there. And you can see mostly just the shirt now. But I've only created this mask right here in the first frame of this entire video clip. What I want to do is make sure that the mask follows all the way through. Now Resolve has another feature to the right here that's called the tracker. And if you click on the tracker and you have your playhead at the beginning of your footage, what you want to do is track forward by hitting the play button. And if you hover on it, you'll see it says track forward. There are other options here. Let's say your play had happened to be in the middle of your footage. You could track forward and reverse all at the same time. So it'll do the entire footage, but it'll go one way and then go the other way. If you were at the end of your footage, you could track backwards. There's all these different options depending on where your playhead is at. But for us, we have it at the beginning. So let's hit track forward. And you can see as that played through, it started tracking what it thought was happening in that mask. Now, even at the end of this footage, if I look right here, I can tell the mask didn't track as well as I would like because I can see a little bit of his arm popping through. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of modification on this mask and tweak it so that it actually follows the shirt and doesn't allow other things to show up throughout the course of this footage. So let me go back to the beginning. I'm going to activate the individual keyframing feature, which is over here on the right. We're currently on the scopes feature, but if you click right here to the left of it, it'll open up the keyframe window. Keyframes are just little information markers to tell the software, hey, as this thing moves through, I might need it to do something a little different. So at this point, I want the mask to be here, but I might need to make an adjustment halfway through. So right here, all I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn on this automatic keyframing feature for the corrector. It looks pretty good here, but I'm gonna move the playhead forward and watch what happens. Okay, right here I can see that the mask is allowing some of the red in the fingers to come through as his hand gets in front of his shirt sleeve. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to grab some of these little markers in the mask and I'm going to pull them in and adjust them a little bit better to what's happening in this footage. I want to make sure it stays true to only letting the shirt show through. And all I'm going to do here is every time I see something popping through that isn't the shirt, I'm going to make a slight adjustment just to make sure that only the shirt is showing. I'll move forward a little bit and I can see that arm showing through here on the left. So I'm gonna move some of these little mask markers over and it'll keep adding keyframes over on the right here for the placement of that mask. to so make sure that the entire shirt continues to show through and not his arm. That's pretty close. Again, I could sit here and tweak this uh, at any point if I notice later on in the footage that this, some of the other things are showing through. I can continue to tweak this and make it even more precise. Now, once I have that mask in and playing the way I want, I can even go back to the picker tool. I can grab that picker plus, the picker add. And if there's areas like down in the shadows, see how that doesn't seem to have grabbed all the shadow of his shirt? I can click down in there again and start grabbing some of that. I wanna watch for any artifacts though. I don't wanna pick so much that I actually start showing up more of the things right on the edge of my mask. Now let me put the playhead at the very beginning of the footage and down below, I'm gonna switch over to the curves menu. And I wanna make sure that I have the hue versus hue option selected. It's the second window right here. 
And in here, I can start to move this around. And if you look above, you'll see that color of the shirt change different colors depending on what I've selected. But find a color that makes sense right there. It's kind of red. Let me see if we can switch them over to kind of a green shirt. And if I go back up above the preview window and deselect the highlight, and if I hit play, you'll see it looks like he now has a green shirt on. There are a couple of artifacts in there that I can notice that I might want to adjust. Watch for things like, see right here on his sleeve, can you catch that? There's a little pink showing through. That shows me that the mask is a little bit off in that area. So it's really easy to go over and select the mask tool again and then make that little bit of adjustment. You don't even have to switch back to the highlight window. You can do it right inside of the full frame with everything turned on and do some little bit of adjustments just to make sure it's doing what you want as you play through. And if you see anything that looks a little funky, make your adjustment. Now, let me show you another thing that you can do. Let's say just instead of changing the color from one thing to another, you might want that color to change over the course of the footage. So if you look down over here on the keyframes menu, you can see because I put the playhead at the beginning, it dropped a keyframe right here on the color corrector. If I were to move this playhead farther down the timeline a bit and then decide to change the color by going back to the curves window, right? The hue versus hue. And instead of green, maybe I wanted him to change to, I don't know, maybe back to that more of the pinkish red that he had. What I can do there is just move that where I want. And if you notice, it's added a keyframe right there where the playhead is because I had that turned on. And when I told it at the beginning, I wanted it to be one color and here I'm telling it to be a different color, it's going to make that transition based on the distance of the first frame to where I had that color change. And if you play this, you will see that his shirt will actually change color as he's sitting there waving. It's almost like a magic trick. It goes back to that original color, right? So that can make for a really cool effect to change color right before the viewer's eyes, going from one color of something slowly fading into another. Now there's lots of different things that you can do with techniques like these, understanding how to place a mask, understanding how to track that mask, and then add keyframes and do some slight corrections to it while your footage is playing. So mess around with those few functions I've shown you. And if you have any questions about any of this, make sure you ask me down in the comments below. And if you wanna learn more about how to edit your YouTube videos with DaVinci Resolve, Click on the video that I have on screen now or the ones that I'll link down below. Peace.